a visual representation of the geology as well as my interpretation as it pertains to the geologic history. This is what it is that I'm presenting to you here in these images. What it is that you can gather is that there exists carbonate crystals within the adits or the mine itself. There also exists copper crystals as well as minerals that I could not specifically identify whilst in the mine. Outside the mine, I observed intrusive slash extrusive igneous rocks, such as this andesite or igneous rock with porphyritic texture. As we moved some distance away from the mine, about 100 to 200 meters away from the mine, I could observe carbonate outcrops, such as this here, and there does exist as well veins. When I applied weak acid, what I observed were gas bubbles, white bubbles that could be interpreted as carbon dioxide being released. Now this image is a borehole representation that would have been done back in 2013 on Mr. Jim Wood's property. The boreholes had a maximum depth of approximately 264 meters. Now in terms of the lithology and the minerals observed, I'm keeping it very general. So as I went through the data, andesitic conglomerates were expressed and these can be observed or understood as sedimentary rocks that compose of primarily andesites. And basically they would have been pre-existing and reworked and basically deposited as a result of agents such as water. Epiclastic was a term I came across and similar to pyroclastics, these are pre-existing rocks, volcanic in nature, that would have been reworked and deposited away from its original volcanic source. Again, this could be as a result of agents such as water. Hydrothermal alteration relates to the chemical and mineralogical changes to constituents of a rock, and this is as a result of hot fluids such as water, magma. Pebble dikes, tabular bodies of brassia or sub rounded to angular uh, class itself, that can be also viewed as an intrusion into a body of pre-existing rock. It is important to note that pebble dikes are generally associated with mineralization. Fracture zones can be interpreted on different scales, such as meters, kilometers, and even centimeters per se. These zones are indicative of tectonic movement, such as fault movement itself. Adularia, a low temperature variety of potassium feldspar minerals found in low temperature hydrothermal environments, particularly in epithermal, precious and base metal deposits. Epithermal and hydrothermal. Hydrothermal describes the general process of hot, mineral-rich fluids circulating through rocks, while epithermal specifically refers to a type of hydrothermal deposit formed near the Earth's surface, typically within one kilometer depth. Chalcopyrite, copper, iron, sulfide mineral, significant as a copper ore mineral. Granodiorite, a coarse-grained, intrusive igneous rock commonly found in the Earth's continental crust. Using the borehole data as well as my observations both within the gold mine and surrounding the gold mine, the geologic history points to the seafloor, specifically near the surface, whereby as a result of subduction and intrusion slash upwelling of magma, we then have a mixing and in certain zones, enriching of minerals through deposition. And as a result of 
many years relating to uplift, subsidence, and even fractures through tectonic movement themselves, we have the presentation of the gold mine as it exists today, which highlights many zones across vertical depth and horizontal layers itself with high levels of copper mineralization.